I am Bishop Powell, the International Bishop for New Testament Assembly, having churches in England, churches in the West Indies, churches in Canada, churches in USA, South Africa, Ghana, in India, and also Singapore. I came here in 61 from the West Indies. And I came as an ordained minister. I was pastor in the church over there, having my own business and things like that. But when I came here, I have came single-handed. The churches in Jamaica could not sustain or support foreign mission because they were just newly set up. So we had to go at it by ourselves. So I have to work full-time job on the field. I was a carpenter by trade. And I have a carpenter foreman job. So I have to work full-time job outside here and full-time job inside here. So I leave work to work. Work to work. Work to work. And um, we have to put our, resor our own resources into what we're doing. Because we didn't have any supporters outside the church group. Similarly, in Road, when we came here, it was already in function, progress. They were doing a missionary work, and we joined them wholeheartedly because mission was our passion. So they would send people to Africa, different places, and we joined with Pastor Edlam in sending people out to those mission fields. And we work very closely. He come to my service, I go to his service, we exchange. And we use his church, he uses our church and things like that. So we had a very good rapport and uh, very good fellowship with some of the people that Brother Saman, he coming from there, he's coming from a long way back. He linking with us from the very inception of the world. Nothing we do that he was not present. And make sure he get our videos and film. So that was the link with Samal Leighton Road. We, we worked together until they take the church down and uh, he had to move on somewhere else. But we still keep a close attachment. You, you were sparked, you were sparked to launch out when you go there. You were somebody who sparked you to launch out in mission. And uh, when we have a service, we always like to see what we have done we, how we get on in service. And if anything special, especially anything special, our big meeting, someone is always there to make sure he's going to film us. And i tell you the truth, at, at that time, we used to call this thing like a mad movie, because it's like an amateur. <laughs> but we used to enjoy it. I still have some of, some of those copies that I could find, I think. We used to enjoy it so much. And uh, people begin to come because they want to see this and just like to see that and see what happened. Baptism service, marriage ceremonies, uh, communion service. He, he just come and film them and we have a good time. So those films, he treasures. I don't know if because we came from the West Indies with a burning zeal. And uh, we were Pentecostal, Baptist, Holy Ghost filled people from the West Indies, we have that driving us. I have to sometimes sympathize with people here because no money come into the problem. You people have to worry about eating, worry about clothing, worry about cost of living, rising up, rent, mortgage. We didn't have no problem in that. I had mortgage, but it was no, it was a problem. <laughs> I, I, I now have to pay my mortgage and I go to work and I make sure the money is here to pay the mortgage. But the church work, nothing stopped the church work in our days. Church work was first thing and foremost thing for us. I, uh, I was involved in the community policing. The night the Brixton riot started, I had a meeting at Glenburn Road with the police. And we were trying to tell them that we, we are foresetting this trouble coming up. We don't know when, what is happening, but what we were seeing among our young people was in certain danger. And it, coming out of the segregation 
system that was segregated against blacks. And uh, I have inspector, corporal, big meeting. We talked to it night and said, I said to the, I remember I said this to the, to the corporal before, I said, I'm not sure when it's going to break out, but it's going to break out soon. It's going to start very, very soon. And by the time I get home and turn on television, there was it. Brixton where I'd start. I'd get in the car, drive down there, I couldn't go down to Brixton. I would turn back. So I couldn't go to proceed. I would turn back and come back. And then I called the police. I said, see what I'm saying? I was trying to say to you that if you don't do something quickly and brief, brief we are going to have this riot. It started in Brixton. I said it didn't start in Balaam and Stratham. It started in Brixton. I think the racial discrimination was a problem. And uh, it, it, it boiled to get to a stage where the young, the young blacks could take it. It wasn't the, the senior black people. Senior black people, could see, they, we could suffer and suffer and suffer and suffer and still suppress it. But the young blacks would not take it anymore. They'd come, come out with it. And you could see from the riot, it was mostly young people involved in what was happening. And, it's, and with, with the background of it was all from the racial discrimination. In jobs, in search. school, stop and search. Nothing contributed to it. Because the stop and search thing was going on and but it was mostly black that was stopping and searching for whatever reason. I was stopped. Yes, I drove along and police just come out and stop me. And they said, Sir, we are doing a stop and search program. So I said, What are you searching for? He said, You can't tell me. I said, Okay, the car is open. So I came with the car, making going and said, Because I know I would find my car is Bible. <laughs> 